Hey, good morning, folks. So today is definitely a spring clean-out kind of day. It's mid-50s, a little bit of a breeze, but it's a beautiful day to be cleaning ponds. Ed's gonna talk to you a little bit about the ecology behind spring clean-outs and how we've established best and safe practices for the fish and the other aquatic life, but just the ecosystem ponds uh, themselves. <laughs> So anyways, like I mentioned, I told you we were gonna have a special visit from a very special friend of mine. Without further ado, here he is, Mr. <laughs> Ed Ballou. Good morning, Eddie. Good morning, how are you? We're doing, I mean. Fine, fine day, right? This is great, dude. <laughs> you know it, you know it. And this is a kick butt pop. I mean, oh my gosh, I can't even remember how old this thing is now, but this was a blast building, starting down over there, working our way through everything, really, really cool project. What I wanna talk to you a little bit about today is about the biology of what actually happens inside of this stuff. When we see we're the pond guys. My opinion might be a little bit misleading because we're more builders of streams and what I mean by that is we always have a flow. If you were to look at a natural pond out in the environment, you get this little pocket of water, might get some runoff coming into it, but you don't really have a flow going in and out all the time. If you do, it's usually part of a bigger stream system or something like that. And the reason I bring that up is because when you're working with a stream system, it's a little bit different because you constantly have a flow of water going through it. So we have waterfalls coming in from these different areas. All that water is going into specific entry areas, those skimmer filters and things like that. So we always have, have that flow going through. The reason I bring it up is we're talking about biomimicry. And what I mean by that is we're mimicking a natural ecosystem. So in nature, you have all of this snow melt. You have all these heavy rains in springtime that comes through and it flushes the entire stream system out. It literally scours the entire stream bed. It's exactly what we're doing here. Some people might say, why are you doing this uh, pond cleanup? Because we're mimicking nature. In nature all of that meltwater is going to scour all that stuff out and it exposes the bedrock. It exposes the river rock on the bottom and everything. It takes away all those sediments. And the reason that we're doing that is when you start getting sediments, you get the accumulation of debris. When that stuff builds up on top of the rock, it kind of suffocates it. So we're looking inside of this thing right now. You're going to see algae growth as this stuff starts to accumulate. And it's a normal process. This process is called eutrophication. The eutrophication process, you're having an accumulation of excess nutrients in the water. And over time, if you don't get rid of this material, it's going to keep building up and building up because it can't break down fast enough. So there's not enough biological activity in here to break it down completely. So it's going to slowly accumulate. We're also only talking about a couple feet of water here. In nature, natural bodies of water could be 10, 20, 30, 50, 100 feet deep. Completely different animal. This is a closed type of an ecosystem here. So the other thing I was talking about was this algae buildup. You do not want to have your ion gen running during the winter time. You don't want to kill the algae because this stuff is responsible for the biological filtration of the entire ecosystem during the winter months. And that's because the biological filters are shut down, the nitrifying bacteria, they don't really function that much anymore. They're down to a minimal. This stuff, however, look at the nice green growth on all this. It looks a little bit brownish right now. It actually is very, very green, and that's because it has the process of photosynthesis. This is actually a living plant. In order for it to live, it needs to suck up ammonia. It needs to suck up nitrogen and phosphorus and things like that that are actually generated inside of the pond. So this is all critical stuff. The other thing that this is good for, it's a great food source for all the small fish and for the large fish during the spring months because their digestive systems are not functioning properly they are actually going to go through and they're going to start grazing on all this stuff this actually jump starts the entire biology of the entire ecosystem so this is very very important if you were to scrape all that stuff off look at it under a microscope you're going to find out it's not just algae this is called paraphyton paraphyton is basically it's algae it's plants it's little animals it's bio slimes and stuff that are growing on a surface so that material Again, it's a whole little universe in itself. It has all types of microorganisms and bacteria and little copepods, rotifers, tardigrades, all these cool little things that are actually living inside of that stuff, feeding on all of that material. The average person walking up to the edge of a pond might say, oh, look at all the cool fish. You're missing the bigger picture. The biological activity that's actually happening inside of a pond will blow your mind. And it's on a microscopic level, but all of this stuff works symbiotically together to give us this really natural ecosystem. 
Not only is it home to all the stuff that lives in the water, but the birds and the bees and the butterflies and all the pollinators and the different animals that are gonna come in from the surrounding area. And that's because this is a haven for life. So this is the basis of the entire food chain. So we wanna respect that. So we're coming in, we're cleaning it out. We're basically doing that spring flushing action just like that happens in nature. We don't wanna get rid of everything. We wanna get rid of the big stuff. I actually like to leave a bit, little bit of that algae on there because it will help to kind of uh, purify the water long term. It makes it better for the fish. The other thing that we did, and I know Chris, you probably already talked about it, but we save all that water. So all the water that got pumped out here, not all of it, but a big majority of it, gets put in separate holding tanks mm -hmm. because that water is actually full of life as well. It's actually been aged for many, many months or years, the hydrologic cycle inside of this pond. So that's all an important part of the ecosystem. So we're gonna spruce it up. We're gonna continue cleaning stuff out. We're gonna get the big debris out but we wanna leave a little bit of that life in there. The biological activity that happens inside of the gravel is critical. We wanna get rid of the big sediments and the big solids, and then from there, kinda let it jumpstart itself and let the entire ecosystem start up again. Now, we can keep going more and more and more, I guess, on stuff. We could go rip out plants out of there, because, I mean, I'm looking over, you got irises and stuff like that that are starting to pop up. The water lilies, all those plants, super important as well, because if you look at the root structures of those, those were planted basically hydroponically, without soil around the root systems. The reason why we did that is because we want those root systems to actually go down and search out inside of the pond for their nutrients, just like this algae. If you starve them, that's gonna force them to draw up the nitrates and the phosphates and things like that out of the water, which is gonna give us better water quality. That little root system around those plants is home to all types of biological activity. All the little microorganisms that live symbiotically with those plants is critical. This is basically a huge recycling plant. Look down inside of here, we'll hop down a little bit deeper. You look down inside of here and you're gonna see sediments and you're gonna see leaf debris and stuff like that. And we wanna try to get that stuff out. Each little piece of leaf, actually, look Look at what's happening to it. So this was deposited last fall. It's actually almost transparent right now. And that's because minerals and things are being leached out of it, but also because of biological activity. Microorganisms, fungi, and things like that are actually starting to break this down. This is the start of the decomposition process. We also have little organisms that we call shredders. These shredders are gonna be caddisfly larvae. They're gonna be different types of larvae of all different types of aquatic insects that are gonna literally go in and they shred the leaves apart. By shredding them into smaller and smaller pieces, it increases the surface area for bacterial action to break it down. As these get broken down, they release nutrients. Those nutrients jump starts the entire ecosystem. That's what all this algae is growing off of. This is like a perfect thing. The leaf debris that comes in from the surrounding trees rains down inside of here from the from the fall winds that come in as they break down release nutrients that grows our algae the algae in turn is home for all those different microorganisms the fish are going to come in here and feed off of this stuff this little pond is a microcosm of life i mean everything that happens in our world that happens in our oceans the great lakes everything that happens around the world is literally happening right here on a miniature scale when you really dig down deep inside inside of the stuff it's unbelievable. I mean, all the stuff that's happening here. And I love having this opportunity to talk to our viewers, to talk to our customers about that. Because when you put in a backyard pond, you're really doing a lot more than just creating a little backyard pond for koi and for fish and stuff like that. You're literally creating a miniature uh, life in itself. Full of life. This riparian habitat is critical for the surrounding community. Shake your finger, come on. Do not kill the algae during the winter time. This is actually the building blocks of life. You don't want to get rid of this stuff. I like to have it, my personal pond, a little bit of a green cover on everything. It's normal, it's healthy. I don't want a sterile environment. If I wanted something sterile, I would literally do a sterilized swimming pool, but a sterilized swimming pool, completely dead. It is devoid of life. There's no bacteria. There's no plants and there's no little microorganisms. It's not normal in our world. That would never survive in a natural environment. We want to create a natural environment that is home to all different types of wildlife and it's going to draw all that stuff in and it's going to be a benefit for the entire biological community. And it starts right here. So here we have some of the iris and stuff. Actually, this is a little bit uh, thick right now. So what I would come in here and I would probably do is split some of this stuff up. But look at that. You got different types of worms that are living inside of there. So this is all part of the ecosystem. So these little animals, they're snails that are living inside of here. And the reason why these things are actually surviving, mm -hmm. normally the fish would destroy these guys, but they have their own little home in here so they could be protected, but they're serving a function. They're breaking down the large organic compounds 
and turning it into food for the actual plant. So a plant like this cannot grow off of actual algae. It can't grow off of leaf debris. It has to be broken down into the micronutrients that actually will feed the plant. And these guys are responsible for all that stuff. So all those little organisms, microorganisms, are gonna break it down and make food for these plants. But we could split this guy up. Super, super healthy. You can tell there is no soil. It's literally growing inside of the gravel bed. Stick this plant in little pockets around the property here and inside the uh, pond and it will continue to grow. So this is kind of root bound right now. Mm -hmm. So by cutting this plant material out, and repopulating it, all of a sudden you're gonna see uh, this burst of new growth. That's really important because they're sucking up the nitrogen. They're pulling out the same compounds that are gonna cause problems. The same stuff that could actually become toxic inside of the pond will actually become food for the plant. So by splitting them up, it's gonna force them to actually absorb more. And then this one little plant, all of a sudden in a season or two, will completely fill that space. So by replanting this around the area, it's really important for this, uh, for the overall health of the pond and that's what actually creates the beauty as well. The most important thing on a spring clean out, getting the pump running again, cleaning out the pre-filter because the pre-filter, skimmer filter or an intake bay where the pump is gonna be housed where it's actually creating a suction of water over yep. the surface, there's gonna be an accumulation of a lot of stuff right in that area because that pump has been drawing it in for an entire season. Second most important part is the biofilter. I could see media over here. So if you were to look at this, again, this is home to all types of stuff, but this is actually all gunked up. This is all excess fish waste. It's sediments that are gonna be washed in from rain that end up in the pond. It's deposited inside the biofilter. So nitrifying bacteria are really finicky little guys. These little microorganisms are really, really uh, responsible for the nitrification process, which takes fish waste, which is basically ammonia. It's gonna break it down into nitrite and nitrate nitrate becomes food for our plants. But they're really, really finicky. When they start getting gunked up like this, they can no longer survive. They need a really clean environment, they need high oxygen, and they need good water flow. So that's why we want, we want to make sure that we're cleaning up the bio balls, the filter medias. All of that stuff is also a sediment chamber down on the bottom that's designed to actually accumulate a lot of that thicker, thicker and heavier material before it actually has a chance to clog up the filter media itself. Cleaning out this stuff, very important. You don't need to blast it really heavily. Usually take the uh, the water that we're discharging from the pond, yep. use that to blast all that stuff off of there, just to get the big heavy sediments off. And then once that's a nice clean environment, this nitrifying bacteria are probably, they're seeded in here, they're gonna be kind of inside, but we're gonna jumpstart this by adding all types of bacterias and enzymes into the pond to really get the entire cycle started up again for the entire season. So a lot of the stuff that's gonna accumulate on here, these are gonna be different types of facultative bacteria, so these are gonna be things that will feed on any Anything. So they'll just start to consume stuff, but they're really not doing the nitrification process efficiently. So that's why we want to get rid of them and get those nitrifiers back inside of the biological filter.